perfectly free to ask him any questions that you want. Uh, Colonel uh, Waldron, did you, um, did you have the opportunity to examine uh, any of the Dominion machines that were used in this election? Uh, yes, sir. Our team uh, looked at some uh, machines and software up in Michigan. So you know that Dominion machines were used in Maricopa County to count the vote? Correct. And they were also used in Michigan? Michigan, Georgia, Pennsylvania. And the machines, that, the machines that you observed, took a look at, were able to examine, were used in the Michigan vote? Correct. Now tell us a little about Dominion. Dominion is a, is a company that makes uh, voting machines and voting calculation machines? That's correct. They've got uh, full end-to-end -end, uh, election, you know, equipment and software. And uh, the actual software in the Dominion machine, is that Dominion software or is it someone else's? Uh, Dominion is, is more of a hybrid. Uh, they, over the years, they've acquired uh, other voting companies, um, Sequoia and Premier. Uh, Sequoia was spun off of uh, SGO, and uh, Premier was spun off of uh, Diebold as a result of the uh, antitrust lawsuit. Sequoia is the company that was uh, involved in the very serious um, uh, miscalculation of the Chicago vote in 2007, wasn't it? I believe that's correct, yes, sir. And they were using Smartmatic uh, software, right? Correct. And they're, the software, the, the, the licensing agreements are uh, pretty well, uh, it, it's, a, it's a good spider chart for all of these companies. They all share a common DNA in the, the software code. And that company, Smartmatic, their, their roots are in Venezuela, isn't that right? Yes, sir. Uh, Hugo Chavez was one of the, one of the founders and uh, invested, I think, 28% ownership in the, the initial setup of, uh, of the, uh, the SGO election systems. And they have been involved in several South American elections that were fixed, altered? Argentina, Bolivia, Singapore, Venezuela, Italy, several. And just, just to simplify things, and we can make this available to you, and uh, we've we have several witnesses that go back to that period of time who were involved in the vote fixing, who have looked at the vote pattern in Arizona and elsewhere and said that the pattern matches the way in which Dominion and Smartmatic, and companies like that, fix votes. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. And uh, what did you, uh, what, what did you, well, let me ask you this other question. Uh, one of the former officials of the United States government, a gentleman named Chris Krebs, the former DHS official, shortly after the election, he made an announcement that many of these people refusing to take a look at any evidence are relying on. What did he say? Um, Mr. Krebs uh, was the director of uh, CISA D at DHS, and uh, he basically said that this election was the most secure in history. The most what? Most secure. In the history. most secure in history. And partially that was because the states uh, do a, uh, an excellent job of validating voter rolls and that this equipment is not connected to the Internet. That was in his... Uh, this, he said this, uh, uh, this is not this equipment which was largely Dominion and several others, is not connected to the Internet. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, is Dominion on his council? Uh, Dominion is, uh, was on uh, Mr. Krebs' election security advisory council. And, and is there, and we'll get to it with the witness, is there substantial evidence, not only here in Arizona, but in other, other states like what we presented in Pennsylvania, that Dominion was, in fact, connected to the Internet. Uh, are, you, are you referring to information other than the user's manual? <laughs> well, let's go back to the user's manual. Tell them about the user's manual. Uh, the the uh, Dominion Suite user's manual is, is about an inch and a half thick. Um, and uh, my, my team went back to the user's manual and looked at uh, all the instances where 
uh, in the user's manual, uh, it tells operators to connect the Ethernet cords to the router, uh, and, and it is, uh, the systems are connected to the Internet. And then uh, what evidence do you have that there actually was connection to the Internet? Uh, our teams looked at uh, spider graphs of the Dominion network uh, on Election Day and showed the, the increased uh, web traffic, Internet traffic, on Election Day for Dominion servers. So on, on Election Day, Dominion was communicating by Internet? Correct. Contrary to what Mr. Krebs said or thought? <coughs> that, that is correct. And tell us now, what, um, what's the, what, how, how, how do they take us through how the vote can be modified, and then take us through <coughs> what you saw in the machine in uh, Michigan where they did actually modify the vote? So uh, um, my background uh, in the military, uh, I started off my career as an air cavalry officer, um, flying helicopters, counter-reconnaissance, reconnaissance, um, moved uh, later into information warfare as an as a information operations officer, uh, running uh, uh, psychological operations, computer network operations, um, deception, operation security, and electronic warfare, special electronic warfare. And um, our team has been researching this specific issue since August of this year. Um, we are working with another team that's been uh, intently working on this voting machine manipulation for about two years uh, when it became apparent in the uh, Ted Cruz and Beto race in 2018, as well as the, uh, the Kentucky governor's race with, with Matt Bevins. Um, we saw significant anomalies in those races, and that's kind of the experience or our, our background working with this system. And I, I would tell you as, a, uh, as an unconventional warfare uh, information operations, information warfare specialist, uh, the American populace is facing uh, an unconventional uh, warfare scenario, and this, this, is, this is information warfare. Um, the voting systems in the U.S. and uh, Arizona, in Dominion and several of the other machines, were built to be manipulated, uh, and, and as the mayor said, they've been used in elections uh, around the world with uh, questionable results. And uh, we believe that uh, these, these same questionable results are present in, in this election. Um, again, my, my background as um, an information warfare officer is how to get in and corrupt these machines to conduct strategic influence operations. How do I, how do I get, get the enemy or, or targeted population in a foreign country to um, think and act a certain way? Um, these machines have multiple uh, points of injection that are um, vulnerable, everywhere from the server level where um, passwords, accesses are posted for the dark web for any hacker to, to get in and access them. And what they can do at the far, far right limit is download CSV files or like an Excel spreadsheet, change the columns, and re-upload them. And, uh, that, that can be done at the server level. At the operator level, if there's software, it can be corrupted. It can be manipulated. With a device that is as small and as simple as a USB device, which these machines are, are booted up and run off of.